there are not enough teachers in the United States. The California School Boards Association tells us that the state needs about 100,000 more teachers to provide high quality education for students. All week long, we're speaking with local teachers and experts to try and get to the bottom of what's going wrong and what's being done to remedy the issue. Tonight, we're looking at how the classroom environment has changed in the world with cell phones, increased political tensions, and an ongoing pandemic. To be a teacher in California right now, it's, it's kind of the worst of jobs and the best of jobs. Between the political pressures and post-COVID, teachers in California, and I should probably only speak for myself, are tired. I teach freshman English three days away from uh, the end of my 28th year. I teach AP Psychology, and I've done 30 years in the state of California. Hey guys, on your reading question. Kim Carroll and Dave Wallace both teach high school within the Roseville Unified School District. They have seen decades of change. Kids haven't changed. Their world has changed. To be a teenager in 2022 is not the same as being a teenager in the 90s. I'm just gonna say it, the phone has changed so much. The phone has changed so much. When I started teaching, you know, to begin a class, there was always this process you had to go to to quiet kids down, because they're all talking to each other. They're not talking to each other. They're all sitting in their desks staring at their phones. And so to get the class started, you have to get the phones out of their hands. That has all sorts of ripple effects. It's harder for kids to work in groups with each other because they're not used to socializing in the same way that kids used to. Enter the pandemic, which forced students to stay home, go through online learning, and also experience mental health issues. Things have changed dramatically since the pandemic, honestly. And one of the biggest problems that I'm hearing over and over again is student behavior. Student behavior since the pandemic, probably because of problems with social emotional issues, has really gotten bad in some classrooms and teachers have left. I have, there's one teacher in Erosi who is like a year from retirement, eligible for retirement, and she just decided it wasn't worth it, moved to Oregon. Not to be a teacher, just moved to Oregon and retired because the student behavior was so bad that she was having panic attacks in her car before school every day. Kids were yelling at her, screaming at her, and so she just couldn't do it anymore. The job of teaching has become more complicated. We're also social workers in a lot of ways. We are mental health counselors to a certain extent. Students who were not on campus, who were on Zoom for an extended period of time, uh, the behavior is very different. They're a lot more immature coming into high school. I think it's the academic skills in terms of how to be a student, how to study, how to work in a group, how to focus on an assignment, concentrate on it, see it through to the end, resiliency, not just giving up. During COVID, there were no extracurriculars. They didn't work jobs. They didn't have soccer. They didn't have clubs on campus. They just did school. So now when they're back in school and wanting to do all those things, they don't know how to juggle school and those things. So we're having to reteach them. In all of my classes, for as long as I can remember, I have talked about wanting them to leave better human beings. That as a social science teacher, I want them to be more aware that there are more perspectives in the world than they even know of, and to ask questions and to listen. Learn to listen, to be good listeners. They'll end up being better friends. They'll end up being better sons and daughters. They'll end up being better partners in life if they can learn to listen um, and to accept other perspectives. Let's not forget the politics of COVID-19. I am officially declaring a national emergency. Tackling this pandemic is a national emergency akin to fighting a war. Big political changes in the country. This is a really serious problem. We haven't even begun to see the end of it yet. Now, the schools have become political sources of tension in the country. I could see someone not wanting to face those sorts of pressures and say, oh, I can find a job with this company where I could work from home or I can go work for the state. And a lot of the state jobs, you can work from home and they also have a good pension and good health care. And, you know, so 
it might be something that would dissuade them. We were heroes for about five minutes, and then it was like, you can't pick your own books anymore. I mean, we're hired by the state of California. We have standards, we have all of those things. Um, but just that extra pressure from politics, from parents, from those things are new, that would potentially scare me out of the profession at this point. I'm seeing more considering things in education outside of teaching. More of them thinking, you know, I think I wanna to go to the county level. I think I wanna to go to the district level. I think I wanna, I want out of the classroom. Not necessarily wanting to leave the profession of education altogether, but wanting to find ways to love what they do, but not do it in the classroom anymore. And that makes me sad because I feel like there's some amazing teachers who have real connections with kids that are burning out. We do want to hear from any current or former teachers watching this right now. Please let us know your thoughts about the changing landscape in the classroom. All you have to do is just send me an email at to the point at abc10.com.